Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything tabletop role-playing games. And today we are talking about methods. It's contest time! Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I want to announce our merch bundle giveaway in which we will be giving away a TDC shirt, TDC hoodie, TDC baseball cap, and three TDC stickers to one lucky winner. Uh, the way you enter this contest is to go on YouTube and check out this giant jar of dice sitting right in front of me. It's full of dice from a bad company <laughs> that is cursed. <laughs> and guess the number of dice that are in this giant jar without going over. Whoever gets the closest wins. Uh, we also have some tiebreaker uh, rules implemented uh, by uh, you also guessing which color you think is makes up the majority of these dice, whether it's blue, green, red, whatever. And then we have another tiebreaker for if, if it gets to that, which I hope it doesn't, but it might. Um, guess how many die of that color are in this jar. So in order to enter, you need to go to the comment section on either the social media posts with a picture of this jar or one of the videos that has this jar, which will be all our videos between now and March 1st, and leave a comment with the following guesses. The number of die in the jar, the color of majority, and the number of said color. For people just listening to this, the yeah. jar is about 10 inches tall. <laughs> I'm just eyeballing this, very rough. Um, <laughs> ten He's inches, making up numbers. Ten, no, it's not. Well, yes, they are, but also they're <laughs> mostly accurate. It's okay. between like, to like 10 to it's in the 10 inch tall range mm -hmm. uh it does have a bottleneck that starts around the seven inch mark and uh it's it's got it's it's rounded edges but it's a four-sided bottle that at its base that has sides that roughly are about like five six inches it's or, or you can go to this video or yeah. the social media post Take a look at the picture and leave a comment. I would definitely do that. It is filled to the brim. I have enough it's dice in there the where brim. I can barely close it. It's got a metal latch. Indeed. Demogorgon's on top of it right now. Shout out to Demogorgon. Let's Good get luck. to the episode. Good luck to, to all of you. Good luck. Good luck. Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How are you doing today? I'm swell. I'm feeling... The chaos of the elements coalescing within. <laughs> good, splitting good. Splitting themselves and becoming cute little ghosts. Mm, I don't know <laughs> if Mephits are cute. No, they're ghosts. ugly. They're, they're quite ugly. hideous. Yeah, I would say. I mean, the air one, the steam one. Oh, you're I know, right. they I are, know these. They are ghost like. Yeah. This is one of the first episodes of the show we've done where I actually know pretty much what's going on here. That's true. These were some of the first monsters I pitted you guys against in a lot of mm -hmm, ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, devils have imps. Demons have quasits, and elementals have methods. It's the year of the elemental all. That's right. That means a year of focusing on all which is made of earth, wind, fire, water, and everything in between. An elemental has a couple of different meanings. Not only can it refer to the base energies and matter upon which all the cosmos of D&D is built upon, but it can also refer to the very basics of what we as a podcast are built on. Wow. So <laughs> That's powerful. So not only is it the year of the elemental on the dungeon cast, but it's also the year of back to the basics on the show. Today, that means some good old fashioned monsters out of the monster manual lore, but it also means we're going to be getting back up into that planar lore, going to hit up all the outer planes this year, going to maybe revisit some character creation and class stuff, going to get back to the basics. And with that being said, let's get into it. I can't wait. I can't wait to get into that uh, PL Anar. That PL extra PL ANR. Let's get on that ANR. <laughs> well, we're, we're about to get extra planar. That's so, right, yeah. planar. Mephits are extra planar elemental creatures, similar to imps, like I said before, uh, roughly humanoid in form and somewhat small, approximately four feet. That's 1.2 meters. In height. Uh, Mephits can be mistaken for imps with their bat-shaped wings, clawed hands and feet, and hunched posture, but differ in some obvious ways from their devilish counterparts. Their faces have exaggerated features, including over-large hooked noses, prominent pointed ears, wide eyes, and cartoonishly protruding chins. Mm. Their skin continually oozes with the stuff of their home plane. Fire methods burn, magma methods drip lava, and mud methods drip mud, and so on. They would make some sick tattoos, like all, like sort of, you know how uh, Queen did one of their album covers with like all their their faces like silhouetted yeah yeah absolutely that would be cool for all the methods that would be super cool for all the methods which one would be your freddie mercury method <laughs> like the fire one you think 
I, the, I think the fire one's a strong one. Um, Freddie Mercury. The air method? Maybe the air method. I don't know. That's a tough one. I have to think about it. Would you put a mustache on your center yes, method? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the exact disposition of methods is dependent on their type, of which there are anywhere between 6 to 16, depending on your setting. Uh, the 5e Monster Manual presents us with six basic types, steam, dust, smoke, ice, magma, and mud. Uh, each method is an elemental spirit that represents a combination of two of the elemental planes combined. For example, the magma method is a combination of earth and fire, while the ice method is a combination of water and air. The other methods outlined in other editions and settings include lightning, radiance, mineral, ash, salt, mist, and the four basic elements of fire, water, air, and earth. That's These are super cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard if you combine the earth, wind, and fire ones <laughs> that they make a new type of method that remembers the 21st night of September. Is that a good joke? <laughs> yes. I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> Only because I like Earth, Wind, and Fire a lot. So. Yeah. I was like, how do I work this in? <laughs> Methods are capricious imp-like creatures in more than just their appearance. Universally reviled as tricksters and rarely in any sort of endearing way, Methods take great pleasure in being pests, displaying tendencies towards vulgar behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, it's true that me and Brian might just be two methods in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> they are by no means inherently evil, though. Uh, they're just kind of jerks when left to their own devices. Just like us. Um, but when summoned and bound into servitude, methods are highly impressionable, always eager to please their masters, and inclu including shifting their alignment to better do so. Uh, that being said, their habit of making mischief does make them more inclined to serve evildoers. Um, and when a method does so, it tends to become sadi sadistic, vindictive, and malicious under such beings. Yeah, so they're like the Sour Patch kids of the d and verse. They're sure, little bastards yeah, for at least a while. They are. Until you start doing what they want. So you'll you'll see this more and more as we get further and further into the year of the elemental. But... Um, when we talk about demons and devils, one of the things we talk about is, like, their incredibly powerful personality. Mm. Like, almost always their charisma is off the scale. They're yeah. very much what they are. They know what they strongly. want out of the multiverse. Exactly. Yeah. Elementals are very much the opposite. They're usually very strong, dexterous, and constituted, but their personality, or I should say their force of personality, is really weak-willed. Like, yeah, they very much represent the matter that which can be shaped by the will of others. Yeah, they're um, they're flippant. They take orders. Yeah, they're flippant. They take orders. They can be changed. They're very changeable and they're very impressionable. And methods very much do um, personify that. Malleable methods. Malleable methods was probably something we said in the first five years of the show. I know we point. did that. Yeah. Damn, did I just get a, like a trigger a in time. my brain go off that made me say that? I bet it. I bet <laughs> okay, it did. But so I'm kind of glad we don't do that anymore. Me too. It, it was, was fun. It was, but was fun. It, well, it's it. sort of weird. Some it was of them. fun until it stopped being fun. Yeah, and then I was like, "Oh my god, we gotta do it again." <laughs> when does it end? Why don't we just come up with a thousand of these? Like uh, we kind of kind of did. Uh, and unfortunately, it is these types of methods we have the most information on. Um, as such. It is quite common that Mephits are renowned for their lo love of tormenting helpless creatures and bragging about their latest evil accomplishments. They give themselves pompous and possibly long names such as Garbenner, Furthal, Sprite Slayer, greatest of all steam Mephits, favorite of the lower planes. Okay, so are the small ones are doing this? No, uh, the evil Mephits are doing uh, this, yeah, which most Mephits that are written about are evil because they serve the evil entities. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> so we don't we don't actually have a lot of information on wild methods that live in nature. Okay, it's mostly evil methods that serve evil beings. Yeah, they're probably like fey spirits or you know like whimsical little like I'm a poof of air. Yeah, I, watch as I ruffle these tree leaves. They they tend to just like swarm in herds around natural phenomenon that attracts them. Okay, yeah. so a little bit kind of what you're saying, but they're not very fey like because yeah they're just they they're more primal. Yeah, I, I meant uh, not fey like in nature, like, or not fey like in personality, fey like in their, you know, like gathering pixies dancing around a That's fire true. or yeah. some shit like that. Yeah. Look yeah. at this herd of mud buffaloes. <laughs> Muffaloes. Muffaloes, if you will. <clears throat> Mephits assume a groveling, craven, yes master stance to their bosses, an air of arrogant superiority toward victims and each other. Methods of the same type usually maintain a polite camaraderie. Um, 
Camaraderie? Com- camaraderie, sorry. Uh, different types often settle disputes with a friendly game of tug a demi human. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Methods under control of an evil being spend their time delivering messages, picking up packages on the lower planes, retrieving particular persons, delivering special magic items, or just spreading general mayhem. Uh, insufferable on missions, they fancy themselves imp- important emissaries. How oh, interesting. I've always run them as more like uh, aloof and um, sort of apathetic, the way like the wind is to a person or like a fire would be to a forest. I think that's very accurate for, for natural methods out there in the wild. Again, these are, I'm talking these about are the methods. evil ones. These are evil methods yeah. serving evil entities. Okay. And they've been turned evil by the evil they've been exposed yeah, to. Yeah. Don't like a lot of like methods serve like a wizard, like an evil that's wizard. A, yeah. It's a com- it's a common trope for okay. sure. For okay. sure. I mean, I, methods are very useful. I, I definitely run methods if I was a wizard. Um, in the wild, mephits gather in large numbers on the elemental planes and in the elemental chaos. They also find their way to the material plane where they prefer to dwell in places where their base elements are abundant. For example, a magma mephit is composed of earth and fire and it favors volcanic layers, while an ice mephit, which is composed of air and water, favors frigid locales. Uh, mephits are immortal, ageless creatures that do not require food, drink, or sleep. Can you imagine just getting stabbed in like a snowstorm? A fucking method flies away like, fuck you. <laughs> God, what a nightmare. I'm the Ice King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would say the Ice King's penguins are the equivalent of his method. Oh, yeah, huh. Yeah, yeah, fucking evil penguins. Is only one of them super evil? Only one of them super evil. Okay. The other, just, they're all penguins. And also the one that's super evil is like an alien overlord from a different planet. Yeah. Spoilers for Adventure Time, sorry. Jeez. <laughs> It's not entirely clear whether mephits are a naturally occurring creature or not. Evil powers on the lower planes can create mephits through spell and ritual, using the substance of an elemental plane to create a servant, usually as a stopgap or substitute for less loyal underlings. Mephits do not betray their creators, but do seem to irritate them, and so they lead brief, troublesome lives. Okay. Poor guys. (laughs) Jesus. It is said that presenting one's enemy with a mephit connotates a message. It's nature indicated by the Mephit's type. The gift of a fire Mephit indicates displeasure at the enemy's action. An ice Mephit means the enemy is forbidden to enter one's home. A radiant Mephit is a truce offering. The recipient destroys, employs, or frees the Mephit as desired. Do what you want with it, but I sent you this (laughs) box of seize Mephits. There's a mystery of what their intentions are (laughs) within each of them. Careful you don't bite into the coconut one accidentally. Oh, God. This sucks. That's that's a weird thing to do. You send a monster in a box to someone's house. This is what demon lords do to each other. Oh, yeah, okay. Or like arch wizards and liches and stuff, yeah. God damn it, there's mud methods all over my house again. Yeah, it's the equivalent of like putting a bag of dog poop and lighting a fire on the doorstep. (laughs) That's what this is. That's the mud method plus fire method combo. Exactly. You open it up and the like... God damn it! Yeah, you open up the crate, much like we did our Spotify crate today, and then like a secret panel gets released that allows the fire and mud method to come together and make the shit burny smell. (laughs) Um, spoiler spoilers for Baldur's Gate three. There's a lot of methods in Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate three, including a unique one I'd never seen anywhere before: the grease method. Oh God, yeah. they're like Pokemon. Yeah, they're like Pokemon. All right, why why is that a spoiler? I don't know because you know so you don't meet the grease methods till Act three. <laughs> oh, I, I got. <laughs> That's that's just like a thing. Like, is it involved? Is it story based? Though, why there's no, methods? it's no, no, it's not story based. You just run into grease methods in the sewer. I mean, extremely light spoilers for Baldur's Gate. There's D and D shit in it. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I just, <laughs> I just felt like I needed to be careful. You know, a lot of people have a lot of feelings about the game. That's true. Somebody right now is probably like, "Fuck! fuck I should have skipped the spoilers." There's game grease, me- grease method. Ah! I didn't even know about methods till this episode. <laughs> Their skull burns away like in the fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> or Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. All right, back to methods. Um, and with that, I think we can dive into specific method types, uh, starting with the dust method. Composed of earth and air, dust methods dwell on the inner planes of earth and air, as well as the quasi-elemental plane of dust. On the material plane, dust methods are drawn to catacombs and find death morbidly fascinating. Dust methods are a sorrowful lot. They pose as tragic yet fashionable victims of a gloomy fate, heroically holding out against utter its insanity. They favor lines like, a dust method I am, lest dust I become. 
gaunt even by Mephits standards. Dust Mephits have dusky brown skin, eyes, and wings. Unlike other Mephits, they prefer to wear clothing, always black, altered so as not to interfere with their flight. In the complex social co code of some lower planar spellcasters, the gift of a dust method symbolizes a subtle threat with the connotation that the giver has recognized some plot of the recipient against them. Okay. Um, <laughs> like I, know, I know what you're up to. What am I up to? No, no, like, is that what you, the gift? Oh, basically, yeah. yeah. It's like, I know what you're up to. Okay, we got a dust method or mefit for those of you in the know. Uh, Small, elemental, neutral, evil. The armor class is 12. Once again, not natural. They're all natural. Does a rock have not natural armor? Our, yeah. Does a tree have natural armor? It says it has an armor class and that it it's does. 12 You're and right. it's not wearing armor. I mean, to be fair, it's incorporeal because it's dust. Yeah. I wonder if... The, but once again, it says it has an armor class here, which implies that... There is armor about, so so. To what, be fair, what, they wear clothes. So it's not like a dust layer of armor. It's they are. I am dust, and it is twelve to hit me. Yes, is what this means. Basically, I yeah. think I tried to do this on another episode, like the Emix episode. Oh, where I was no. like, he's not wearing armor. He I know. Couldn't. I know why it's not natural armor. I think because it's basically it's magic. base ten plus their Dex mod, which yeah. is just their agility. So that's not armor. Yeah, so dex is plus two for this, so 12. Yeah, okay. HP is 17. That's 5d6. We have speeds. 30 feet of walking. 9.1 meters. And that's 30 feet of flying as well. 9.1 meters. <laughs> very good. Minus three strength. Ouch. Yeah, Weak well, they made a dust. Weak ass, dusty ass method. They're very method. gaunt. Fucking dusty, crusty ass method. This is the longest nose ever. Yeah. It's got a joint in it. Not like a weed yep. joint, like a like a knee joint. Yeah. It's plus two dex, plus zero con, minus one intelligence, plus zero wisdom, and plus zero cha. Yep. Wow. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's a low level mob. True. Uh skills, perception plus two, stealth plus four. Not bad. I'm I'm just a cloud of dust. <laughs> Don't look Don't at mind me. me. <laughs> it's vulnerable <laughs> to fire. Odd. Well, like dust well, actually, like that dust is combustible. Is very combustible. Yeah. 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 Does they just explode? Yeah. You got to be careful in like flower factories and stuff because mm -hmm. that shit can blow. It's true. Uh, there's another drug reference somewhere in there. I don't know. <laughs> Damage immunities, poison. Oh no, my cocaine. <laughs> <Sorry>. There <laughs> it is. It's exploding. <laughs> Condition. <laughs> it's actually a dust method. <laughs> ah, no. White dust. <laughs> Stupid. So the dust method or a snow method? It's immune to poison. Uh, it has dark vision of 60 feet. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> how dare you? 18.2 meters. It's uh, got a perception of 12. It's uh, a passive perception of 12. Its languages are Aurin and Terran. So the air language and the earth language. Yep. Um, it makes sense for these not to speak full primordial. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, challenge rating is half or 100 experience points. Proficiency bonus plus two. It can do a death burst. When the method, they all can. Yeah. yeah. This is the cool thing about methods is when a method dies, it explodes and a burst of this one is deuced. Each creature within five feet of it. 1.5 meters. Must su then succeed on a DC 10 constitution saving throw or be blinded for one minute. A blinded creature can repeat the saving throw on each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Oh, so blinded is cool. Eyes. Well, like not, I got dust in my eyes. not to be blinded, but like it's a cool thing to implement into a fight. Yeah, absolutely. it'll change things. Yeah, uh, innate spell casting once a day. The method can innately cast sleep, requiring no material components. Its innate spell casting ability is charisma. Sleep is only as strong as the person casting it. It's a very strategic spell. It is situational and uh, good at the end of a fight where you can knock out a bunch of people with low HP. Honestly, facing like three of these guys at like level one or two is scary as shit because they could probably put the party to sleep. Yeah. Um, treat it like a Pokemon battle. Get that motherfucker in the red and then sleep him. Mm -hmm. uh, actions, claws, weapon, melee weapon attack, plus four to hit with a reach of five feet. Oh, shit. 1.9 meters. 1.5 meters. 1.5 meters? Yeah. Okay. One creature uh, is going to hit for four, uh, 1d4 plus two slashing damage. 
Uh, I have one more footage for you coming up here, Well, <laughs> Blinding Breath on a recharge of six, which this is cool for a low-level monster to have. Mm -hmm. The the Mephit, or the Mephit, exhales a 15-foot... That is not converting. Uh, 4.5 meters. Cone of blinding dust. Each creature in that area must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw or be blinded for one minute. A creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. There you have it. Mm -hmm. That's a method. But I like these as mobs. These are one yeah. of the cooler mobs because they blow up. Yeah, they blow up. They can blind people and they can put them to sleep. Yeah, they do a lot. They've got a cone, a 15 foot cone to like, like when you've got six of these things fighting a party and they're all fucking coning you. Yeah. It's a low DC for the deck save, but like you can have six of them coning you. Yeah. So one of how many going to roll one? How many flips and cartwheels can you do? <laughs> Let's find <laughs> Let's out. Let's find out. <laughs> all right, moving on. Next up, we have ice methods, comprising frigid air and water. Um, ice methods are aloof and cold, surpassing all other methods in pitiless cruelty. <laughs> Ice methods are angular with translucent ice blue skin. They live on the inner planes of water, air, and the para elemental plane of ice, the frost fell, as well as the colder lower planes, and thus never mix with the fire, magma, smoke, or steam methods. Ice methods act aloof and cruel, surpassing other methods in torture and wanton destruction. So these guys are mean. They're cold as ice. Is wanton destruction like a big, uh, like a crab rangoon falling onto someone's house? I mean, I think that would that would <laughs> qualify. <laughs> I got an ice method stat. We'll go through this a little quicker because they're so similar. Yeah. Um, this one also has a joint in its nose. Ice, does that mean it can like do a hooky? You know what I mean? I mean, it, the description is that they have hooked noses. Yeah. Can it like move the joint hook though and like snaggle you, you know, like give you a little scratch? Maybe. <laughs> ice method is small, elemental, neutral, evil, uh, AC 11, uh, HP is 21 or 66. Speed is uh, 30 feet. 9.1 meters. Or flying 30 feet. It's, it can run and fly. Uh, do they run? I always picture all of these hovering. Well, like, they don't actually hover because that's like a thing. Like yes, I know. Hover. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, they're depicted mostly flying. When you fight them in Baldur's Gate 3, they never walk. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of how I always pictured them because yeah. I don't know. This one does have like. Why walk when you can fly? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to get down there, though. I guess so. Yeah, Just sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, even birds, they got to go eat that bug or whatever. Mm -hmm. Pull it out of the dirt. Yeah. Uh, strength minus two. Dex minus one. Con plus zero. Intelligence minus one. Wisdom plus zero. And cha plus one. Perception plus two. Stealth plus three for skills. Damage vulnerability to bludgeoning and fire. They are brittle boys. Mm -hmm. uh, they are immune to cold and poison. I like that. Mm -hmm. Condition immunities. Poisoned. Mm -hmm. Uh Dark vision of 60 feet. 18.2 meters. Passive perception is 12. They speak Aquan and Auron. Uh, challenge rating is half or 100 experience, and proficiency bonus is plus two. This one also has a death burst. When this Mephit dies, it explodes in a burst of jagged ice. Each creature within five feet of it must make a DC 10 dexterity saving throw, taking four 1d8 slashing damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. I like explosions of ice. They are like animated and imagined the same way across all cultures, I feel like. I guess so, yeah. I that shit, really thought about that it. shit has a burst point, mm -hmm. and then that shit climbs in the icy, spiky spires mm -hmm. and uh, and freeze. You know, you get locked in there and mm -hmm. you're like in mid, like, oh. Um, I like it. False appearance. While the method remains motionless, it is indistinguishable from an ordinary shard of ice. That's scary. Yeah, I don't know if, you, know if you guys remember, but I had you guys fight the ice methods that were like posing as gargoyles. Yeah, uh huh. You had to like perceive them. That was way back in the first of all raiders. <laughs> Innate spellcasting once a day. The method can innately cast fog cloud, requiring no material components. Its innate spellcasting ability is charisma. It uses its force of will to fart this ice cloud out, this fog cloud. <laughs> uh, actions, claws, melee weapon attack plus three to hit, reach of. Five feet. 1.5 meters. Very good. One creature is, uh, it's going to hit for three or 1d4 plus one slashing damage plus two 1d4 cold damage. Frost breath uh, recharges on a six. The method exhales a 15 foot. I'm trying to do it off the dome. Uh, I know. It's so good. Okay. It's 1.5 <gasps> for five, right? Yeah. And it's three, four, 10. So it would be 4.5 meters. Yeah. Sounds about right. 
Uh, each creature in the area must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw, taking five or two D4 cold damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Uh, and that's it for the ice method. Nice. Farts ice clouds. Next up, we have the magma method. Composed of earth and fire, magma methods glow a dull red color as they perspire beads of molten lava. They are slow to comprehend the meaning of others' words and actions. They dwell in the inner planes of earth and fire as well as the para-elemental plane of magma, also known as the fountains of creation. Some are known to dwell on the lower planes of the nine hells as well. Uh, magma methods or lava methods are the least intelligent of all methods and hence the brunt of the fire method jokes. <laughs> uh, they are sensitive to these insults and anger easily when offended, <laughs> but otherwise they are passive and less temperamental than other methods. They generate extreme heat that can be felt up to 30 feet away, which would be nine meters as well. How was your day at school, Ignacio? I was fine, Mom. Guys made fun of me again for being stupid. Well, you are stupid. <laughs> Shut I up, know. Mom. I know. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All right, tell me about the Magma Method stat block. Uh, they're, they're small elementals of neutral evil. Their armor class is 11. HP is 22 or 5d6 plus 5. They have a speed of 30 feet, fly of 30 feet. Uh, that would be 9 meters. Mm -hmm. uh, strength minus 1, dex plus 1, con plus 1, intelligence minus 2, wisdom plus 0, charisma plus 0. They have skills of stealth plus 3, yeah. damage vulnerability to cold, and damage immunities to fire and poison. Condition immunities, poisoned senses, dark vision of 60 feet. Ooh, that's 18 meters. Passive perception of 10. That's, uh, uh, oh, it's yeah, just that's, 10. That's... <laughs> ten. 10 is super good for metric people. It like, is. we're good. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Languages, Ignan and Terran. Uh, challenge rating is half or 100 experience points with a prof proficiency bonus of plus two. These are all copy pasty of each other you know yeah it's just the way it is yeah uh which is fine i think just for this the, monster yeah i think that's fine yeah. as long as they they have particular abilities or actions that are different that's the main thing death burst when the method dies it explodes in a burst of lava each creature within five feet of it oh sorry 1.5 minutes <laughs> must make a dc 11 dexterity saving throw taking seven or 2d6 fire damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one false appearance while the method remains motionless it is indistinguishable from an ordinary mound of magma which like you know <laughs> that's just an ordinary mound of magma i don't know what you're talking about bob <laughs> uh we're we're at the salmon farm we're at the lake right now and uh that shouldn't be there <laughs> And just pour a cup of water on it and kill it, you know? There you go. Throw there a fish on it, see what happens. Uh, innate spell casting once per day. The method can innately cast heat metal. Wow. Save, uh, mm. Spell save DC 10, thank God. Requiring no material components. Its innate spell casting ability is charisma. Actions, claws, melee weapon attack with plus three to hit, reach of five feet. 1.5 meters. One creature. A hit is three, 1d4 plus one slashing damage plus two, 1d4 fire damage. Uh, I love that it does the combo damage. It's mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Fire breath recharges on, uh, recharges on a six. The method exhales a fifteen foot cone of fire. Oh God, I lost it again. Four point five meters. Each creature in that area must make a DC uh, eleven dexterity saving throw, taking seven two d six fire damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. And there you have it. Nice. Well, with that, uh, before we get into the the last three methods, I think it's time to take a short rest. Let's do it. Let's All do a shorty. It's the grand adventures of Alien and Beard. Oh, fuck. I can't believe that it's over already. Yes, it seems we're the only two survivors. That's they, so weird. They're all dead. How do they all... I mean, we did kill a bunch of guys. I, we killed a lot of we dudes. We killed a lot of dudes. I have yeah, like eight like... heads on the spear. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Who knew? I'm proficient in spears. I get. I you didn't even want the spear. I told you, man. These things are great. You yeah. know, I I doubted you, but I think I'm a spear guy now. I think. Wow. How did you? Wow. See, I just kept poking people right in their hearts. Just behind. I'll be honest. I blacked out the whole thing. It was a blur. Oh, that's good because you didn't see my butt. I bewildered a lot of them. They were just a lot of the guys. I'm not gonna be honest. A lot of the guys you killed were just standing there, staring at my ass. <laughs> But I'm like, that's what we needed. Yes. We had a system. Yeah, exactly. We're t teamwork. I teamwork got, makes the dream work, I am, as they say. I got to say, I am I am so tired. Ever since I painted that yeah. thing, I don't know, I'm just like unusually tired. You may be suffering from, dare I say it, a level of exhaustion, Ben. Me? No. Like, I mean, 
It happens to all, to us all. None of us are perfect. You know, we, when was the last time we even went to sleep? It's been a, I, before the, there, before I flipped a mountain. Wait, I didn't flip that mountain. That mountain flipped on us. Yeah, no, there was those weird dudes did that. All those, all those goats, and those tandem bikes are just sitting down in the basin. Oh my god. Well, now we're here in on a Cuban Acheron. Yeah, what were they what? even fighting about? Yes, what were they fighting about? I think I did hear somebody say that there was some gem of power. Gem of power, you say? Yeah, they were like, oh, get, get the gem of power! And I was like, oh, there's just too many dudes. I don't even know. The people, were the people, I, I was just kind of killing indiscriminately, honestly, because I'm not really aligned here like that. Shame, shame. Well, we should look for this gem of power. Let's let's take a look around. No, I'll take a look around. Uh, we can use a magic artifact of some sort. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look around. Alien! What? What? What are you? What is it, man? Come over here! I'm, I'm coming! Hurt, 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 hurt. I can't believe it. What? Look! Oh! <laughs> We've done it, man! A third shot of substantial support! It's so beautiful! Hold it forth! I, I gotta hang on. This dude, I can't get his hands off of it. Is is? Stop! Yeah. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> Stop, stop, stop! Uh, it's not coming off. Okay, hang on. Maybe I can pry the fingers, this cold dead fingers off of the shard now. Like, oh, oh man. This is a really tight grip. Oh, we got it! Yes! Woo! All right! Oh, they're all, they're all spinning, all three yes. of them. They're, they're coming more powerful, uh, man. Uh, oh, one whoa. step closer mine's, to our dream. Mine's lifting off the, off my hand. Oh, it's yes. floating. Yes. Uh, they're Let all floating the together. They're all floating through you. Oh my God, they're all merging together. <laughs> Ilion, what what's going on? What are they doing? They're, they're rotating and blasting a beam into the, the ether or something. I believe they're leading us towards the next shard. And then no, it's 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 opening a a, a tear in oh, the fabric of reality. A tear in space. It's tear it's tear shaped. It is it is actually tear shaped. We should go in there, Ben. It looks nice. Let's get out of this. It place. looks there's a couch in there. Oh. What luxury. It's I you know I feel safe around the shards. It's like a pocket dimension of comfort. Yeah. The shards want us to wield them. A tear in space. And they know that you are suffering from a level of exhaustion. So let's fix that. Uh, I we can go to bed. We can go to bed. That right here. Right here. Wherever in, we want. We, whenever we want. Maybe we're For now we have three shards of substantial support. They're supporting substantially right now, I would say, making a tear in space for us. Tear-shaped tear in space. A tear in space, if you will. Let's go in. Indeed. Oh, look. Look, Ben. It's a lot of white. There's a green lounge chair. That's nice. Ah, oh, that looks comfortable. It is comfortable. Look, a bet. Ilian. What? An easel filled with paints. Oh, how right for, here. How fortuitous. Look, a table full of beakers and, and Bunsen burners and stuff. Maybe for your wizard stuff? Yeah, yeah I, I mess with an occasional Bunsen burner. A, a, a rack of books. Oh, yes, reading materials for my lounging. Look, uh, uh, it's a strange dais of sorts. It looks like it's it's a perfect size for the orb of ether's net. Hmm. Very interesting. This is getting strangely and uncomfortably convenient. It's my favorite drink. <laughs> Beer. This may be a trap, Ben. No. We're being supported right now. That's Sub true. That's I would true. say substantially. This is what it means to benefact from benefactors. Threefold. Three more folds than we're used to. Indeed. Why don't I lounge in this chair and regale you with a tale from my youth? What's up with it? Before you do that, what's up with this big P on the wall? Uh, obviously, that's for patrons. P for patrons, got P for it. Patrons. Yeah, P for patrons. patrons um, yes. Are you gonna, are you gonna, of your youth, you're gonna tell me about your past? Indeed, I am. I'm sorry about that one time I asked about who named you. It's okay. Okay, let's. I'm feeling like sharing today. Excellent. Let me get, let me get all restied up. Look, slippies. Oh. Oh. There's a set for me and a set for you. Indeed. Oh, these ones seem to be themed after the elemental creatures called methods. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. This one's all muddy. Gross.
We've returned. Indeed, we have. Uh, we're fucking back. Indeed, we are. We're on. We're we, we're feeling the chows now. Aren't yes, we? we're yes. all up in the chows. We're all up in this chows. <laughs> anyway, um, there's a new tier on. There's a new old tier on Patreon. We're reformatting an old tier that didn't get much love to a new one that's Ilian and Beeren centric. I hope the skit we just did embodies that entirely. Um, <laughs> but in case it doesn't, in case it's not clear, there is a, now a tier of Ilian and Beeren centric content. We'll try to put as much Ilian and Beeren stuff in there as we can jam into it. Our next recording session is going to have a uh, conversation between Ilian and Beeren in the tier in space. Uh, I don't know exactly what that's going to be. Is it going to be the Demon Lords? What do Demon Lords do for fun? I mean, we'll find out when we get there. We can also do a patron-nominated thing like we do with our okay, Patreon What do you episodes. want to hear Alien and Beer talk about? Yeah, what do you guys want to hear? So you try to keep it in you, I guess. I don't know. They have the orb of Ether's net. They can peer into... The internet. I would love to hear Alien badly explain real Earth stuff to Bjorn. Maybe that's what this. <laughs> let us know what you guys want to hear. That's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Um. You know, hello from the Magic Tavern. Style it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is like a big inspo for what we're doing. Yeah. With Alien. So shout out to those improv geniuses. Indeed. Chunt the Badger. Um. Arnie. Arnie Knee Camp. <laughs> Arnie Kneecap. Use, use. What kind of name is that? Arnie Kneecap. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, yeah, and Usador, who I feel like you draw some inspiration yeah, from Usador. <laughs> some? <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, yeah, check us out and support Alien and Beer on Patreon.com slash the Dungeon Cast. We also have an ongoing YouTube uh, slash social, sh- social, social media contest going on that involves counting the number of dice in a jar which are not at the front they're not at the front but will said that we have to do a special video to go at the front and a special audio clip to go at the front of this one (laughs) to promote it because we forgot again to do it again but you know that's what happens when we just like convolutedly come up with a contest like (laughs) mid recording so you know there we are we are who we are (laughs) and uh yeah, now we can get back to methods. stuff. Yeah, me fits. <laughs> All right. Well, next up is the mud method. Mud methods are slow, unctuous creatures of earth and water. They dwell on the inner planes of earth, water, and the parallelmental plane of ooze, also known as the Swamp of Oblivion. They drone their complaints to all who will listen and beg incessantly for attention and for treasure. Strangely enough, I couldn't find any reference to mud methods pre-fifth edition. Uh, it seems the mud method has been introduced to replace the ooze method. And oh. though similar, they do seem to be distinctly different from each other. That being said, the mud method has two sentences dedicated it, dedicated to it in totality. Okay. So I don't have much to add. <laughs> <laughs> They're made of mud. This one is mud. <laughs> mud method, small elemental, neutral, evil, armor class 11, HP is 2766 plus 6. It has a walking speed of 20 feet. Whoa, it's slow because it's muddy. And- That's 6 meters. Uh, a flying speed of 20 feet and a swimming speed of 20 feet. 6 meters, 6 meters. Uh, strength minus 1, dex plus 1, con plus 1, intelligence minus 1, wisdom plus 0, charisma minus 2, skills, stealth plus 3. Damage immunities, poison. Condition immunities, poison. Um, dark vision of 60 feet. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm just like, yep, that's standard. Yeah, uh, yep. 18 meters. 18 meters. Uh, insert joke about how everything has dark vision here. It's passive perception 10. Language, Aquan and Terran. Challenge rating a quarter on this one. 50 XP. So this is noticeably and statistically... Like, just less powerful all the way around. Yeah. Uh, proficiency bonus plus two. The, so the mud method is the worst one. So uh, far. A mud method is what happens when you think you have to fart. Uh, death burst. When the method dies, it explodes in a burst of sticky <laughs> sticky mud. No! Yep. Yeah. The, uh, the, the denim destroyer is what they should call this one. Uh, each medium or small, unless you wear leggings. You know what I mean. Uh, each medium or smaller creature within five feet of it must succeed on a DC 11 dexterity saving throw or be restrained until the end of the creature's next turn. You know, who doesn't get restrained when they shit their pants? Uh, mons- absolute monsters. That's I hate, who. I hate this. Let's keep going. False appearance while the method remains motionless is indistinguishable from a pile of, you know what, mud. <laughs> a mound of mud. 
Uh, actions, fists. It's just a mound of mud, Bob. What are you talking about? <laughs> Doesn't smell like mud, Jim. <laughs> Tell you that much. <laughs> actions, fists. Melee weapon attack, plus three to hit. It doesn't Re even have claws this fist. Nope, just has muddy fists. Gross. Oh, no, gross. Reach of five feet. Uh, 1.5 meters. One creature is going to get hit for four. One D6 plus one bludge. Bludging damage. Mud breath. <laughs> Recharge of six. Oh, man. The method uh, belches viscid mud on... Is that viscid? Viscous. Yeah. Well, it's V-I-S-C-I-D. I guess viscid in Vis mean. Viscid mud. Onto one creature within five feet of it. It's 1.5 meters. If the target is medium or smaller, it must succeed on a DC 11 dexterity saving throw or be restrained for one minute. A creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Oh, viscid means uh, glutinous and sticky. Mm. So it is different from viscous. I have a new way to describe my bowel movements. <laughs> Is that it for the mud method? That was it. It uh, looks like you just want to like lock people down with this one. It's just going to restrain all over the place. Yeah, they're just really annoying. Yeah, they're not. They're not doing a lot of damage. Yeah, they're, they're, you mostly want to blow them up to slow people down. Yeah, just put uh, a bunch of mud methods around an earth elemental. They'll lock them down. The earth elemental will fuck them up. The earth. Um, you're gonna round a corner, and there's gonna be like a. You're in a box canyon or something. There's like a cliff. And there's a earth elemental up there, and he's gonna see you guys and be like, "My tummy hurts." He's gonna turn around and blast a bunch of mud methods on <laughs> what you. The... <laughs> God damn it, Brian! We're moving on. <laughs> okay. Smoke methods. Woo. Smoke methods are crude, lazy creatures of air and fire that billow smoke constantly. They rarely speak the truth and love to mock and mislead others. Mm. They dwell on the inner planes of air and and smoke, as well as the para element. Air and fire, as well as the para-elemental elemental plane of smoke, also known as the Great Conflagration. The Great the great Snoop Dogg's house. <laughs> the Great Seth Rogen City. Hey, is that Snoop Dogg? <laughs> what are you doing here? Snoop? Is that you? I didn't know you were smoke. I thought you just did it, did it a lot. Snoop Dogg's a smoke misfit in disguise. <laughs> He's there with Martha Stewart. She's like, I do, I'm here too. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, Martha. <laughs> Jail changed you, baby. Smoke methods <laughs> spend most of their time sitting around invisible smoking pipe weed. Telling Whoa, really? <laughs> Actually? Wow. Telling bad jokes about their creators and generally shirking their responsibilities. You mean I get to do actual weed jokes because weed showed up in the show? <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, this is wild. It only took eight years. We got I there. know. What the fuck? Lower planar beings traditionally dispatch a smoke method as a gift to enemies, a gesture of insolence and contempt that amounts to a declaration of a vendetta. <laughs> yeah. <The> smoke <laughs> method is like fucking. So let's go around. Let's go sit sit in a circle, buddy. <laughs> I brought I brought brought that good Kush. We got a. Uh, was that it? Yeah, that was it. We got a smoke method. Small elemental of neutral evil. They changed that law. Uh, armor class is 12, um, HP is 22 or 5d6 plus 5, speed is 30 feet, flying 30 feet. Oh, shit. <laughs> I have a job here, apparently. Uh, 9 meters, 9 meters. Yeah. Strength minus 2, dexterity minus 2, constitution plus 1, hey. Uh, intelligence plus 0, wisdom plus 0, charisma plus 0. Uh, let's see. Perception plus two skill, uh, stealth plus four for skills. Uh, damage immunities to fire and poison. Condition immunities to poison. Uh, dark vision, 60 feet. Oh, uh, that's 18 meters. Uh, passive perception is 12. It speaks Auron and Ignan. And challenge rating a quarter, 50, another weak, a weak boy. Mm. Uh, proficiency bonus plus two. Death burst, when the method dies, it leaves behind a cloud of smoke that fills a five-foot radius sphere centered on its space. The sphere is heavily obscured. Wind disperses the cloud, which otherwise lasts for one minute. And don't breathe that stuff in unless, you know, you want, it. unless you want to. And then do, definitely do. Is that smoke method green? <laughs> Is that it for smoke weapons? Is that Jimi Hendrix? <laughs> this purple haze? Uh, innate spell casting once a day. The method can innately cast dancing lights, requiring no material. That is Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> requiring no material components. And its innate spell casting ability is charisma. It's like, hey man, you've been acting funny since I got here. Let me put on a little show for you. 
<laughs> Claws, melee weapon attack, plus four to hit with a reach of five feet. 1.5 meters. One creature is going to hit hit for four or 1d4 slashing damage or 1d4 plus two slashing damage. Cinder breath, recharge of six. The method exhales a 15 foot cone. 4.5 meters. Of smoldering ash. Each creature in that area must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw or be blinded until the end of the method's next turn. Okay, he just look. throws a fucking ashtray at you. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like the dust method. Yeah, it's kind of like the dust method. So this one smokes weed. Apparently. Huh. We ready to move on? Yep. <laughs> Next up, we have the steam method. Okay. Composed of fire and water, steam methods leave trails of hot water wherever they go, and they hiss with tendrils of steam. Bossy and hypersensitive, they are the self-appointed overlords of all methods. They dwell in the inner planes of water and fire, as well as the quasi-elemental plane of steam, of which they consider themselves to be the lords of. Mist methods, who dwell on the plane of steam as well, refuse to obey their higher temperature cousins. <laughs> and this disobedience has led to a millennia-long rivalry between the types. In addition to the hissing steam that escapes from their pores, steam methods leave a trail of near-boiling water where they walk. Pores implies they have like a body. It does, but they don't. They sort like they could, I guess, because they have this sh this weird like gremlin style shape. Right. Like something's enforcing the shape. Something's enforcing the shape. Maybe it's like a very like, you know, like a I don't know, something with pores, like a sheet of paper style canvas for their element to sort of eke out of i'm not really sure uh, it's hard to parse this one out steam method is a small elemental of neutral evil with an armor class of 10 hp of 21 that's 66 or speed uh, with a speed of 30 feet nine meters a flying speed of 30 feet nine meters minus three strength plus zero dex plus zero con plus zero intelligence plus zero wisdom and plus one charisma that's why they think they're the, the best. They're, they got a little bit more chaw. They're a little less strong, too. Mm. Uh, damage immunity to fire and poison. Condition immunity to poison with dark vision of 60 feet. That's 18 meters. Passive perception of 10. Aquan and Ignan are its languages. It ranks at a quarter challenge rating for 50 XP with a proficiency bonus of 2. Death burst. When the method dies, it explodes in a cloud of stam. Each creature within five feet 1.5 minutes of the method must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw or take four or 1d8 fire damage. Innate spell casting once a day, the method can innately cast blur, requiring Ooh. no material components. Its innate spell casting ability is charisma. All right, well, you know, disadvantage on hitting them that automatically boosts their armor class up. Yeah, quite a bit. like its low AC is going to be, it's def, they're, they're going to blur. Uh, it has claws. Melee weapon attack plus two to hit with a reach of five feet. Why does the steam method have claws, but the mud method has fisticuffs? Fist. Yeah. <laughs> it's mud method, it's just throwing hands. Yeah. Uh, that's 1.5 meters. Indeed. Uh, one creature is going to hit for two or 1d4 slashing damage plus two 1d4 fire damage. Uh, steam breath, so we're going to recharge of six. The method exhales <clears throat> a 15 foot cone. It's 4.5 meters. Of scalding steam. Each creature in that area must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw, taking four or 1d8 fire damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a success. Very nice. So, what do you think of methods, Brian? I think they're one of the most fun mobs in the game. Agreed. They're varied and they explode and yeah. they. They can touch you with their they, nasty they noses. They almost all have some, number one, they all explode. Number two, they almost all have either an AoE damage attack or a condition-inducing attack, AoE attack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're interesting. They're well-made. I do think, I think yeah. all those things, they can fly. They, they can, can fly. all fly. Yeah, they can all fly. Which is just fun. They, they all have a spell that's actually useful, whether that's fog cloud or, or blur or whatever. Yeah, I like so. having them being like mindless little... Uh, like taskmasters in a dungeon. Yep, yep. They're just kind of walking around, and they might not fight you unless you interrupt what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. They, they're they're not inherently aggressive. Yeah, they like look and notice you, but then continue their little tasks. Yeah, like uh, a magma method might be cool for like a fire giant lair, moving little buckets of magma around to like help heat the furnace in the fire giants, you know, or the dwarven or whatever, you know. The grease methods you meet in Baldur's, but I, I say meet, but that you come across in Baldur's Gate 3, um, they don't auto aggro on you. And you can hear them banter, and that shit is hilarious. Yeah, see, stuff so like funny. that. Yeah. Um, 
I I, mo I mainly have mine silent. That might be like a lack of preparation on my end. Yeah, like, I mean it's it, hard to ima imaginativeness. Ad lib some banter. Yeah, like I'd prepare it. I'd prepare like a funny j banter joke yeah. that would add flavor to the scene of like what these creatures are. Yeah. Like, oh, they're just little workers, you know. But these little workers are little bastards that explode if you fuck with them. Um, mm -hmm. They are hard for a party to handle in a mob because they start exploding and the party's like, yo, what the fuck? Are they all going to do that? And mm -hmm. then they start really like thinking about what their next moves are. Yeah, this is kind only mildly related because of exploding but um the point in my honor mode uh run of Baldur's Gate 3 so far that I almost actually wiped was a bunch of enemies their blights that exploded much like the methods do mm. and then damages each uh the explosions damage uh their allies as well as my characters I killed one and it set off a chain reaction of blow up blow up blow up blow up and that could very well happen with methods too if they're clustered together it, they will they, you could they, do a chain reaction it's all explosion. creatures yeah exactly and so, yeah, that could, like, fight's over, but only one of you is left conscious, and the other three are, like, failing death-saving throws and stuff. Like, that could be like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, so. that's that's big. Yeah, this can be problematic. Um, but you'll learn a lot from your first encounter with the <laughs> group of these, for sure. I would probably throw one down, or a couple, like, a small mob down first. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a, you know... They might summon another mob if they fuck up, you know. Right. And now they have to deal with it. Um, yeah, very cool stuff. I like adding elemental things to my games. Yeah, like, me too. I like elemental. I'm I'm about to do just a full elemental themed um, uh, improv campaign coming up here pretty soon. So I'm excited why not? About You're it. doing all this research for this chouse. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with that being said, I think we can get ready for a long rest. We should. Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome to The Long Rest. We have a new line of products coming out in the Slippy department. Uh, they are, you know, each elemental and they've got method faces on them. But if you, if you like throw, you know, sometimes you take your, your shoes off, you're carrying them and you just sort of like toss them to the corner or whatever. Yeah. These ones will explode if you do yeah, that. Yeah, so you can't do that. You can't do that. No. You can't do that. Or if you kick somebody or if you like, you know... <clears throat> Chonkla style, like throw one, <laughs> like and that they will explode they on will your explode. your opposition. But if you're throwing a chonkla style, that's probably what you want. That's probably what you want. You <laughs> want ops to feel that explosion. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So get your method slippies uh, in the ether. They're not real. This is a joke. <laughs> Although I wish we could put out D and D style slippers. That would be sick. Yeah. Uh, but then we'd have to copyright slam. Well, we would have to work with the demon Hasbro. <laughs> The, the, tr the true demon lord. The true demon lord has Hasbro. Has Hasbro. The demon lord of greed. Hasbro backwards is a Satan. <laughs> Damn it. As Asmodeus is the whole time. Has Hasbro. So it'd be Hasmodeus. <laughs> Hasmodeus. Let's see. Hasbro. That's Orb. Orbsaw. Orbsaw. Orbsaw, the demon lord of <laughs> greed. It would be a devil. It would be a devil lord. I guess so. Yeah, probably because it's an organized corporation. Although they're running it so chaotically. Who's to say? <laughs> <laughs> it's a devil and a demon running it together. Oh, God. And then there's all they're the, working in tandem. There's all these wizards riding constantly. And they're like, please, Hasbro. Osbra, has, it's oh, Hasbro oh, now. Oh, sorry, Hasbro. Sorry. <laughs> What is this show? I'm writing as fast as I can. It's not enough. You're laid off. All of you. Fucking Hasbro. All 1,100 of you. I won't make you slippers, Hasbro. I will just float ideas about cool products <clears throat> out there, though. And we will also announce our own merchandise bundle giveaway. Yes, that's what we're right. doing. We have a contest. Indeed. Rolling. And the prize for said contest is a TDC shirt, a TDC hoodie, a TDC baseball cap, and three TDC stickers, all featuring different years of the uh, years of, year of the dragon, year, year of the giant. Oh, there you're gonna give me another woo. woo. And, yeah, <laughs> and year of the fiend. Woo. <laughs> um. In order to enter the contest, you need to guess the number of dice that are inside the gigantic jar that will be somewhere on the camera in the episode. Yeah, in a special video. <laughs> like, sp uh, we are going to make it separate from... We usually don't make things that way, but we're going to do... In between episodes, we're going to record a video with the jar exclusively on display. Indeed. That'll play at the top of this episode on YouTube, and you can also find 
an image of the jar on social media. Indeed. Um, we can give you the dimensions of the jar, I guess, when we do the post. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's like eight inches tall or nine inches tall or something like that. The closest guess without going over will win the prize. A tie will be broken by guessing which color specifically inside the jar has the most dice. A further tie is broken by uh, who guesses the closest amount of said color die. Does yeah. that make sense? Price is right rules. Don't In, go over the amount. Indeed. If you go over, you lose. Indeed. So, um, I mean... It'll be smart for somebody to guess one, I guess. I think that works better in small batch competition, like where there's only a couple people, because then you can bridge the gap from one to the lowest number. Those are all your numbers. But mm -hmm. when you're going to have like, I imagine hundreds, maybe thousands of people participating in this competition, that strat might not work so great, but you can enter multiple times. Um, you can enter by including a comment uh, with the following guesses, the number of die, the color of majority, and the number of said color. Um, in the comment section of each video running from now until March 31st, which is when we will be announcing the winner of the contest. Oh, no, sorry. March 1st, not March 31st. March 1st, we will be announcing the winner. So any video between now, what, what you're listening now, and the episodes that drop before March 1st, you can leave a comment with the three following guesses. Yeah, go to YouTube. You must be subscribed to the channel yes. and have the like button hit on that. Indeed. Um, and then on the social media post as well, they can Yes, answer? on the social media post as well, of which there will probably be one a week. Uh, you can leave, this again, the same following guesses. The number of die in the jar, the color of majority, and the number of said color. Yeah, so... Like an example would be like, there's 312 dice in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, think I think the majority is green. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. And, and I think there are 84 green. There you go. Yeah. All right. Sick. Um, yeah. So keep an eye out for that stuff. Uh, all that merch sounds super cool. We're going to have, uh, we've got some new merch stuff in the works. That's going to be lots of fun. Uh, when it's ready, we'll announce that. Um, also check out the new tier on Patreon. <clears throat> it's the tier in space. Which I'm liking more and more as I continue to say it. <laughs> um, and then, tier in space, semicolon, the tier of Ilian and Beeren. The beer, the Ilian and Beeren tier. <laughs> we are on the social medias. Indeed, we are. You can find us on Twitter or X, X formerly known as Twitter. Uh, Mastodon, we're on Discord. We're on threads. Um, the links are all in the description. Check it out. Yep. We do have our own merch store. We have uh, a P.O. box, an email address. Feel free to hit us up and uh, or send us a postcard. And then, uh, yeah, man. What else? Is that it? I think that's it for I now. Think, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, check out Dragon Star. Oh, yeah. I'm writing a book. Trying to get it done by this summer. It's a source book. Uh, set in the world of, or I should say, universe of Dragon Star, which is uh, the universe in which we played our life play D and D space campaign. Yep. So, Super um, Quest Saga. Yeah. Going to have custom species, custom. Uh, not well, we'll have custom species, but it'll have eleven new species plus a custom species builder. It will have a uh, thirteen new subclass options, um, a plethora of new magic items and uh, high tech devices it's going to have vehicles it's going to have spaceships it's going to have rules for spaceships and space combat it's going to have 120 plus alien monsters and a whole map of the galaxy and a bunch of other stuff yeah uh <clears throat> while you're on our youtube channel check out our new video um what was the title of the tale of the tale of zario uh, the tale of zario the fallen yeah um, will did a great job writing that shit and getting it up there and we are uh what people responded well so we we want to make more of those Mm -hmm. uh in the future so yeah go check that out it's it's really cool it's a story about all about Z like we've covered zariel here indeed but it's like the, the a dramatic, epic, dramatic immersive yeah telling of the tale while working in uh the the various themes on which these stories touch on in dungeons and dragons it's will story corner embodied go go check it out uh there's also is there another thing going on F bats on still, still in the works. Yeah, we're still mm -hmm. writing. We're doing that. Um, that should start airing on Patreon pretty soon. Finally, um, let's see. It'll eventually become public. Mm -hmm. And yeah, let's call it a game. 
Let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. The Dungeon Cast.